Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm going to turn the mic down just a slightly. There, it's all the way. Greetings. Okay, test one, two. Test. <laughs> test one, two. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, huit, dix. Okay. Uh, uh, je ne comprends pas la mathématique. Okay. Now, we try once again. This should be really clear. I'm looking at the waveform now, and it looks like not as loud as before, but probably a little clearer than before. I do have my uh, coffee. I had just a horrifying, uh, you know, people want me to weigh in on the, uh, people are talking about the MERS situation. Uh, I'll tell you my honest feeling um, is that it's, weaker than it was and then it somehow they these kind of diseases they mutate away and they get weaker as time goes on uh, I they may try to keep reintroducing it or reinvigorating it so they can kill as many of these uh, enemies since the the world's enemy is obviously Americans are the enemy of the world so they got to kill as many as possible in this um, without letting the American people know or waking up the sleeping giant that the idea of the pigs in power, the little oink oink alien demon people, the hybrids, uh, their idea is to uh, get rid of the problem, which is America and any idea of sovereignty or freedom and get a bunch of willing slaves to take care of their needs on the planet, uh, to which I find hilarious and not worth my time. Um, just like what I was kind of reading yesterday about this whole alien demon agenda, it's been around for a long time and it's the, the, the real problem and what I've seen is the willing selling of the soul or soul scalping that goes on, uh, particularly in teenage life when people are initiated into the, that side of things and they feel something has been removed from them and then another thing is put there that is their overlord or their oversoul or their over, their uh, what you might call the uh, controller of their lives. And then eventually they realize they're not in power at all and they have to go along to get along or be killed since they already took the bait. And I'm sorry, that, but they, they did not value any relationship with God. Most of these people believe they have a relationship with God. And if, you, if you're soulless, the Bible really talks about this, which is you've not, got to be in possession of your soul the day of the Lord. You know, if you're not in possession of your soul, then you're lost. Now, the Bible is quite clear in, in, in many, you know, in many, said many different ways throughout many different chapters throughout Old and New Testament. To be in possession of your soul means that you could not have um, bowed down to the world system. And if you have, it means you must repent and be redeemed by Jesus Christ because that's the only redeemer we've got on planet Earth. That's the only way we have available. If there are other ways, I would, I would have found them out. Uh, what's gone is gone, friends. If they take it out of you and insert a thing in you, which is what they do, deep within you, you can't fight it. It's almost like part of your DNA, what's put in you. And uh, that thing uh, runs your life. Uh, that's called conformity, by the way. And that's literally the only definition of conformity that you'll ever get here at the Zeph Report. It's a willing agreement <clears throat> to bow down to the, um, the side of death and destruction and evil in exchange for having a little life, to be able to have a little house and a little, you know, uh, thing you can show up every day to work and be tortured by. And, uh, and then you die. Um, you, you know, it's very simple. It's, a, it's, it's called hell on earth and, and earth is hell. I think most people would agree with that. In other words, it has a veil of Disneyland, of course, and people get fooled, so it's still good here. No, fundamentally here, it's, it's basically a, a contest <clears throat> and it's evil. And it's at like 80% darkness and about 20% light. You know it and I know it. You know, and it's been proven to you again and again. It's not 50-50, take the good with the bad. 
Never was, never will be. That's not the purpose of the situation here. So, once enough people get scalped, and I saw it. I mean, I saw it. I used. To, I, I wrote uh, screenplays about it. One called Soul Exchange. Where basically, okay, the new age concept of the walk-in is basically, uh, you know, like the the story of uh, K-Pak, the movie from about a decade or two ago. Okay, that was basically about demonic possession because the demon that the, the, the says it or came from another planet had a different name. Uh, that it had to be, but it's like, well, if it came from a different planet, where's its body, dude? The answer is it couldn't have a body. It had to take over a physical body in order to have a body. And that's what basically all these entities want to do. That's the alien demon, demon agenda. And, um, you know, they, they all claim to be from somewhere else. They're all liars. And uh, basically they want to take over your body. They want to break you down so that you will allow them to come in. Basically, K-Pak was a movie about typical conformity and demonic possession of typical conformity to society that is pervaded by all institutions upon the earth. And um, mommy says it's a good way to go because then you'll make mommy proud. So, you know, it's like a world where invasion of the body snatchers succeeded and everyone got snatched and you're the only one that isn't. So you're the freak. So you got to figure out how you can go. Well, if you can't be hypnotized, you're not going to make it through to the other side. The other side is also another name for death, D-E-A-T-H. When we talk about the other side, contacting souls on the other side, uh, which is kind of an oxymoron, um, but it's okay. Go ahead and try. It's called death. We reach to the other side of death. When we say the other side, it's another term for death. Other side of the river Styx is the realm of what? Death. What's the whole point of conformity? Death. What happens when you join society? Death. What happens when you just uh, take your place in the, in the spooky, superstitious world that no one can talk about, but, you know, they nod and wink and look the other way? Death. It's death. And you are not in possession of your soul. So you're not moving on. Your soul will move on. You're just a, a bag of uh, disconnected multiple personalities. <clears throat> That's all you are. A bag of little egos. It's being controlled by an over-ego, by an over-soul, by an over-machine. You're now a hybrid. You're not the human you were. You've gone to the realm of death. I, listen, you know... I know it when I see it out there, and I see a lot of souls dead. And if there is a nuclear war, and if the United States is taken out by such a thing, it will be because um, God did it because uh, there's, you know, now, now the Lord, in all fairness, though, the Lord told me that there's enough good here and enough intact people to, to keep on, that the United States will keep on after Obama. It's kind of hard to believe despite the best efforts to be in a war and, you know, bring diseases and, and, and plagues. And they've thrown everything at you they can uh, through um, poisoning the food and the water. And yes, it's the, uh, you know, uh, the, the left-wing progressive agenda. It's also the neocon agenda. It's, it's left and right are meaningless. But, you know, the people that, some of them that you see in power that particularly people like Nancy Pelosi who are screaming about Republicans want to hurt the air and water, she and her policies and her party has hurt the air and the water. Uh, behind the scenes, you know, in, in classified Congress, they know exactly what's going on with our skies, with our water, with, with the um, chemicals in, in the society, with the idea to get the death rates up so that the, the people they made deals with, the Chinese, can replace the Americans here, which is what's going on. I told you that in 2004. Nobody believed me that I see an exchange. In other words, you'll still have houses and properties here, but it'll be another entity that will take them over and the people that were here will be judged unfit and be gone. And that's exactly what's being allowed to happen. Now, I'm not doing it. I'm simply warning you about it. I'm telling you what's going on. I'm telling you your politicians made deals with the Chinese to move them in and have them take over cities like Detroit. They're taking over Manhattan. Um, 
a lot of very wealthy Chinese, and they're coming here and buying everything up that they can have because they realize that it, it, you know the exodus is on, and they're moving from China, and they're coming here, and they will be. Um, you will be replaced, and it's that simple. And that's because you failed America. And I warned you about that in two. Th- there, I said there are no Americans here in the future. You know, I didn't know how it would go if it would be a. You know, it looks like now it's a kind of an orderly exchange. In other words, as people are um, falling and, and falling away, more and more of these people are buying it up, you know, Chinese and coming in. And they have deals like the Harry Reid deal in, you know, to have millions of acres and whatever it is. And, um, you know, have their solar plants and they're, they're coming and doing their businesses. The politicians are just, um, you know, bowing down to them. The land is the collateral. You got, they borrowed against you, folks. And then, they're, then they made their deal with the Chinese, and you knew nothing about it. You know, there's a thing you do to people like that, but you don't have the balls to do it, so it, it's, they're just going to keep on raping you until you finally get it, which I don't think you, you'll do, because they have built up a huge military to take care of those of you who get it. Don't you get it? The reason for Homeland Security is because they know you're going to get mad at some point. They want to be ready. Uh, but if you, you think you're going to, you're going to continue, you know, I'm so disappointed in you, America. Well, I'm so disappointed in, I'm so embarrassed to be here. This used to be a land of courage. And I mean, you know, we have no, we have nothing but pussies in our military as well. You know, this used to be a land of courage, you know, at, at least somewhat. But the way I've seen it now, it's just a bunch of babies. And I, and I guarantee you, it's just going to go to pussyhood which is you'll be taken over, you'll be replaced, and you won't even put up a whimper. The Department of Homeland Security is not here to deal with the Chinese. They're not here to deal with the the Muslims. They're not here to deal with the immigrants who are coming in to take over your houses and your mortgages and things that you couldn't pay anymore. Okay? Uh, They're here for you when you get upset with that. That's why they're here. Do you, does it take me to say it? Haven't you gotten enough of this on alternative radio? On, I, guess, I guess you do need me to say it. Well, let me cut at least to what I can contribute. You know, I'm pretty mad about it myself because, you know, without Americans standing up and standing together, the, the, it will be divided and conquered. And I think it's really sad that you, on your watch, you parents, you people out there that are in positions that you could do something about it's going to be, history will show it's you who actually did this. Don't blame them. Don't blame the Chinese. Don't blame the Department of Homeland Security or the neocons or the, the Bush family that, are, that engineered the whole Nazi fascist situation. You know, don't, uh, you know, there's still conservatives out there who think um, the Bush family is great and Jeb Bush is great. I mean, you, 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 the history will show these people caused the fall of America. Bush cried, the W cried when he said America's days are still, best days are still ahead. Did any of you catch that? The most important statement of his presidency or after or of his lifetime. The most poignant and telling and prophetic and confessional statement ever made by a president or an ex-president. And um, America didn't hear it. So what do I do? I'm sitting here with, you know, people out there blind, deaf, and dumb. And there's nothing, I, I just sit here... Um, really in a sense in my own um, solipsistic uh, nightmare of seeing what's happening, reporting to you what's happening, what's going to happen, and then it keeps happening. You know, I uh, don't agree with uh, Alex Jones on the wake up rates or, you know, and we're, we're taking America back and the media is waking up and the dinosaur media is finished. I mean, they've gotten the last three years, it seems they've gotten more done than ever before. So if America's waking up, but they're not doing anything about it. And, you know, and, and, and we're saying we should listen to Alex Jones and all be quiet in our houses and not say anything and go out on, you know, what? Go out and have, have strap on some guns at the, at the Alamo rally and say, see, come and take them. Come on. By the time this all gets said and done, um, by the time the next rally happens, this thing will be over. 
and they don't care about you know, a bunch of you know disgruntled um, veterans and and you know patriotic people and Christians and you know truth people. They don't care if you strap on some guns. They got all your ammo. They got all your you know. They've got uh, they got tanks and stuff. They got um, they've got concentration camps. They've got uh, you know armored personnel carriers. They have uh, drones. You don't have that. So they're going to have um, figure they're going to have the total advantage. And then then when you get mad that you're being thrown out of your houses and you're being displaced, you will have to shut up or you will be hauled off. And then the the people that are coming in will be given carte blanche and the red carpet treatment while they take over your businesses and your homes. Do you like that? Oh, oh, hello, Seattle. Do you think that the uh, music industry might repent now? You morons. I just, yeah, I say Seattle because I had to watch Soundgarden last night. Um, concert from 2013 summer at the Wiltern Theater, uh, Los Angeles, California, right on Wilshire and Western. So it's called the Wiltern because it's at Wilshire and Western Avenue and kind of just passing mid Wilshire on your way to downtown. Anyway, um, used to go there a lot uh, when I was living there, a great venue for music. I was so thoroughly disgusted with this band that uh, I just thought, okay, all right, if they ever wake up, which I doubt they ever will, but if they, if they would, because they're, they're shrouded in you know, left-wing politics, you know, and it's kind of thinly veiled in their lyrics. If they ever wake up, if they ever want to realize why their music is meaningless today, you know, they had a, they had a, a brief go in the, in the 90s, okay? Fine. But today, they, I saw four men lost on stage. I saw one Chris Cornell wandering around looking for some meaningful lyric to say and had nothing. And Spoon Man is not, you know, I mean, they're hit from the 90s. Bringing that back just felt about as dated as, as could be. And his main poignant line in Spoonman was, come on, will I get off? And he looks like he couldn't get off if his, you know, if, if, if his life depended on it at this point, maybe a few gallons of Viagra, you know? I mean, he just looked dead. You know, I hate to put it that way, but I mean, if that's the most poignant thing they do, uh, we're really, in, you know, I'm sorry, but there was nothing and uh, <clears throat> the music was a retread of the 90s. And it was meaningless. I, I couldn't believe it. I was, you know, because I really liked this band. And I really enjoyed the musicianship. I particularly liked the, uh, you know, the rhythm section, the drum and bass. I thought that, you know, that was a really, really strong and unique. Uh, not so anymore. I mean, it was okay. Uh, no, no, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. it was, the crowd there was eating it up and screaming, uh, you know, un most crowds don't realize when they're getting fed, you know, bologna or steak. They don't know the difference. So it's cool. You can do that. You can feed them, you know, mindless um, uh, numb nuts lyrics and, and, and you know, but, it, but, it, but there was no passion. It's this, this guy's wandering on the stage kind of singing and then he's screaming. Then he starts screaming about something meaningless. I don't get it. Are they, so, you know, I guess they have a cult following and, you know, the, I guess there's a lot of mindless concert goers that, that mindlessly do things with mindless musicians. And so it was a mindless exercise of mindless audience and mindless musicians going nowhere. And the reason I say this is because, you know, while Rome is burning, that's what they're doing. You expect to get my respect from that or my attention, but your audience is so stupid, it's okay to just give them pablum and then and then tell them they should do and then the other thing is that you know what i really resent in um people that where rock stardom has gone to their heads is where they start lecturing the audience of what they should or shouldn't do you know or they have a kind of a mean vibe and i'm you know feel like a, they're so self-important they, they get a little bit mean i'm like dude you aren't that good you know you, here's a guy who's got a great blues voice who has squandered it on meaningless um pursuits I watched a few songs, you know, but I had to, I had to leave in disgust and, you know, I, it was like, yep, it's one more band that was like a, you know, a one hit wonder from the past. That's a total disappointment today. And, um, you know, people say, well, he's a great voice. Yeah. A great voice needs good lyrics. 
Great blues voice. Yep, needs good lyrics. Meaning the lyrics should reflect the, what's going on today in the world. Not some pet thing, you know, or some... Uh, and by the way, back in the 90s when the Spoon Man and this and that and you know, some of their hits were, were going on, um, I felt like it was very one-dimensional and like they had kind of a cool psychedelic rock vibe going and I really liked that with some tight rhythm and stuff and uh, they were doing the same. I would have thought that someone like this after 10 years of growth would have gone at least more modern into music. It, it's a case of someone thinking they're modern they're, they think they're cutting edge, but they sound like a retread, like a rerun. It's okay if they want to keep doing the same old, same old. But, you know, uh, where's, the, where's the sound? Where's the, you know, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's horrible. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was watching slaves on stage posing as musicians. I was watching mind control robots posing as people. So I turned it off. Not wanting to, wanting to enjoy it, enjoying, you know, being a drummer, I really enjoy those drums, but how could I keep on with vapid lyrics and stupid insular, um, meaningless stuff that, that the audience is, you know, cheering on, cheering on further, um, you know, and I may be, you know, hey, you know what? I'm not wrong, but if, if they ever took anything like this to heart, my suggestion would be to change, to grow, to embrace new things, to try new things, to try writing about what's going on rather than, you know, political hack, you know, whatever, or putting guilt trips on people to, to be culturally relevant like you are. Ah, man, oh man. So I, the reason I mention it today is because I just, I, I want you to know, I did put the time in, you know, to, to um, being that I have Palladia here, it's like the best seat in the house with a, with a great sound system. I'm able to, to get right in an HD right on the stage. I mean, you can, you, there's nothing that escapes you at that point. You're right there front and center. So, you know, sorry, but, uh, you know, D minus, um, A for musicianship, I give them an A right? And an F for content. And, uh, and I give the audience at the Wiltern Theater an F minus for being, you know, for not holding anyone to account, for just being mindless drones cheering and clapping when the, uh, when the applause light goes on, having no discernment whatsoever about the music they're taking in. Just mindless fool. How would you, I would c commit suicide if I had to play to an audience like that every night. That's one reason, I, I mean, we're talking to uh, Rich about playing, and, you know, he said he's going to play in a club and this and that. It's like, I think I'd commit suicide if I had to play in clubs before. And, uh, you know, I, all I would do is drink myself under the table because I couldn't stand it. Because I felt so utterly, totally empty and irrelevant and stupid. Because the people there... All they wanted to do was basically take drugs and have sex. The, 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 the DJs or musicians there, they, they're just facilitators. No one's going to listen to them. Nobody cares. If they, they could help you get off, then, then you, you know, pay them millions of dollars. Um, if I had to do that, I would, I'd just put a bullet in my head and get it over with. Get out of here. That would be hell on earth. So maybe I'm being mean, you know, maybe that's it. I mean, someone's being mean here, maybe it's me. Uh, but that was, you know, that was a band. I, I actually remember giving that record to, the first Soundgarden record to a friend. And this was after this whole kind of metal thing and Metallica had their, you know, back in the early 90s. I said, this is the future of music. And I handed him the, the, the Soundgarden record. And, um, and then they were a great disappointment. They were not the future of music. They were the retreadville. So sorry about that. I'm sure they could take issue. I'm sure anyone that ever criticizes them, they would take issue with and put them down and 
and smirk and laugh and go, we got our audience, we sell lots of records, you know, you're a fool. I'm sure they can do that all day long. They're not going to listen to anybody. They're not going to change. That was the other thing, you know, you could tell they were, they were entrenched in their position of, of self-righteousness. So it's like, okay, well, the, the, you know, you know best, you know, but, but this is like a vapor of the past posing as something relevant and being utterly pretentious. And, you know, in other words, you take that blues voice and you crank it up for something banal, you know, even Oh Baby Baby was more relevant than what was going on last night. You know, in terms of that was taken from last summer, like July 2013 summer concert at the Wiltern Theater. So I, but I doubt much has changed because nothing changed from 2013 back to 1993 or back to 2003. From 2003, um, well, they weren't even together again, but they, since they got back together to do the old sound, it, it, it just, it's almost like, sing ZZ Top in the casinos, you know? I mean, they do their thing. They're like watching canned music and uh, then they move on to the next casino. It was like that, it was on that level. Someone, you know, and and what happens to people? How do they get possessed in that way? Um, How do they lose their souls? What I saw last night, maybe they didn't lose their souls. I don't know, only God knows that, but I can tell you this. What I saw was soulless, no soul. And a didactic kind of, you know, arrogance that I, I don't quite, I mean, I, it was okay when you're 25, but I mean, at this point in time, it just is not going to work. When Cornell is saying, come on, will I get off? I'm like, yeah, if maybe you need your Viagra today or, you know what I mean? I just, it was absurd. You know, it was absurd. Come on, will I get off? Well, I don't know. Will you? It doesn't look like it. It was certainly a fizzle uh, that night. I don't know, you know, and, and it could be that the roots of the Seattle thing, you know, of which produced a sound garden and, you know, Nirvana and whatever, maybe the roots of it, you know, being kind of tied to the libido, maybe because of that, that umbilical cord to the libido and to the bass, to the banal, to the vapid, to the stupid, Maybe that tie never got broken. They never evolved beyond that. It just all became about that and whether or not, whether or not people who listen to them are ever going to conform to society and then, and then you know, grow long hair and, and act like they're a rebel when they're not. I, I suppose that's the issue going on with everybody. I'm here to tell you very succinctly, man, I'm on a roll today. On a roll today! I know you hate it, but months from now, you won't refute it. I know whereof I speak. It's been many, many years in the making. And unlike Soundgarden, here I am, you know, an older generation from them. But I feel like I'm much younger. You know, like I feel like compared to them, I'm in my early 20s. Everything is cutting edge and new. Everything is, 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 everything can be, you know, there's, everything's on the table. There's all kinds of potential and possibilities. I feel like, <clears throat> you know, the, that, um, you know, I understand, and, I, and I'm going to riff into this. I understand that the world needs to be, um, had dealt a big blow to wake up. Or uh, rather, I'm sorry, to do more than just wake up, but to understand you know, their position and only after, and they're trying to get it done. You know, there's, they're trying to get a huge loss of life with this MERS thing, but it, it, I believe, I feel like I, I've looked into it in this, in the, this is coming from the spirit, not science. Okay. So you take this with a grain of salt and try the spirits on this, but I got this kind of notion. Okay. This sort of word, if you will, that it dissipates in time. I know they're warning at the, they're warning that it's going on. They, they want to get a plague going because Obama really needs the plague, you know, to keep on going with his, um, with one of the most stupid um, things I've ever seen on the public stage is, is Washington, D.C. It's, as the Lord said to me personally, it's the most evil place on the planet. It's, it, it's so far beyond any kind of evil. It's, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's, 
it needs to, uh, there's no way to rehabilitate it at this point, you know, maybe move the Chinese in, I don't know. But it is, um, it is the worst of the worst in the history of the entire human race. It's the worst, most corrupt, most evil, most lying, most scumbag, most anything that by any measure you would have, it's the worst that the world has ever seen. And I suppose that's why many Muslims in the, in the Middle East and elsewhere called America the great Satan because they could see that where I couldn't see it. Now I see, thanks to Obama, I see new levels and I ask the Lord, Lord, how deep does this thing go? And it's like all the way to the alien, you know, the alien demonic agenda is for humans to eat each other's entrails. I mean, so, so any measure above that, it, so if, if that's the end game, uh, t cannibalism and, and self-mutilation and death, then, then obviously it's all the way there and beyond that even. These people would take a super collider and aim it at uh, the sun, let's say. I mean, if you could aim it like a gun, I don't know if you can, but they would take a super collider with the idea of, of de deleting all matter, the material. That's where they're at. They're, that is exactly how far gone they are. You know, they started by worshiping death, but after thousands of years, it gets con concentrated in a place like Washington, but not far behind or, you know, other places in the world. Um, but the idea of the proud America, that'll never be again. The idea of the home of the brave and land of the free, that's never going to be ringing true for anybody ever again. At this point, my friends, you're going to have to save yourselves. That's basically um, what it is. You're going to have to get free in the Lord, get free in the spirit. Realize that you're a soul. You're perfect. You're, you're one. You, if you're one in God and he's one in you, John 17, then you're perfect and one. There is the, you, 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 the flesh is temporary. It's a, it's, it's, it's a monkey seat you step out of. So basically your soul is what's going on and it will go on and you will succeed. What you, you've needed to go through, all these things, all these lessons you've gone through, doesn't it seem, folks, like the, the lessons that you've gone through on this earth have all been tailored to you? They've all been things you needed to work on, like, like lessons specifically designed for you to get over certain things so you could move on with your lives? The, that's your soul that's going that. So I guess, the, you know, I've pondered it since yesterday reading that semi-New Agey thing I read, you know, which I, I don't endorse completely, but there were a lot of great ideas in it. Ideas you're never going to hear from Christian leaders, which you need to hear uh, because it's more accurate. Okay, it is really truly more the word of God. But then again, it's fraught with speculation every once in a while that's a zinger that you have to not accept, which is, you know, I've been thinking, well, for example, on the soul, whether it evolves or not. My take on it is this, the soul is perfect and completely emancipated and then goes through a state of amnesia or different states and goes through certain things to be a witness to the glory of God in the end, not necessarily evolution. May I say it that way? That, that take has never changed for me. So if we have to have the specter of WW3, the frustration of sitting here watching a Nazi-like fascist takeover while people do nothing, to see people that I looked up to become mindless drones on stage and produce nothing of significance, just a lot of noise. Noise meaning, you know, good playing, good riffs, good this, good that, but ultimately all dressed up and nowhere to go, meaning the, the, the boys were lost. They don't know what to write. They don't know what to do. So they're just, you know, jamming, I guess, while Rome burns playing their fiddle while Rome burns. Insignificant, irrelevant, vapid, banal, and utterly stupid in the end. And so I had to turn it off. I thought, well, okay, so I turned off Paul McCartney, I turned off um, Soundgarden, I turned off Rolling Stone, I turned off uh, all of these things I used to hold as icon. I mean, when I was a kid, boy, I was up there, I'd watch the late night Don Kirshner rock concerts and I watched all these icons of rock and all I wanted to do is be or be like them and I was playing my drums and I was getting better and better and you know I that that was it I was just you know it was all about that and now the same thing goes with the chili peppers to watch the cartoon chili peppers 
uh, on stage at, you know, at the behest of one Bruno Mars. Oh my God, was that sad. I just felt like, you know, I, I had to turn that off. I had to turn away. The Super Bowl halftime, I, I have to never watch that again because, again, stupidity on steroids. Bruno Mars is an idiot. Why do I want to watch an idiot? Sure, he's got talent, just like Chris Cornell has talent. But I mean, what for? What's the point? Unless he's going to, you know, put his shoulder to the wheel and start doing something significant. It's like, what do I care if he's masturbating on stage? Who gives a shit? It's a waste of my time. It's not helping the situation, i.e. overt slavery of the human race. It's not helping the situation, the alien demon agenda of soul scalping, which is going on worldwide. Could it be they lost their souls or they gave in? You, you people are so dumb, you don't even know what you gave yourselves to. I'm not going to respect you as a musician if that's what you've done in order to be on stage. You don't get my respect that easily. Maybe your audience is a bunch of morons and they don't give a flying whatever. But I see what happened. I see what you're doing. And I understand what it is. And I understand the whole thing. And I understand your place in it. And I'm looking at you like you're in a little fishbowl that I own. And you're just doing, you know, I'm cheering for you to cross the finish line. But all you're doing is going in circles. And uh, you're going to die doing that. And um, I, my choice is to remove you from the fishbowl now which would be more humane or watch you die a slow, painful death. I mean, you know, metaphorically speaking, what do you want me to do? So you're gone and they're gone. And then we move on to the next cultural icon and they're gone and they're gone and they're gone. The flicker rates of the TV, the spying through Skype. Couldn't anyone write a song about that? Well, mm, guess not. <clears throat> and now I find myself a voice, you know, like this is like, you know, a performance that you're getting here. You know, I'm, I'm kind of on a little stage of uh, my own irrelevance, but I mean, I'm doing it f for whatever is in me to do, whatever the gift is to express it, you know, and uh, to do it musically, to do it this way, to do whatever, it's all the same to me. Speaking truth to power, which these guys aren't doing. Because they're in bed with the power, because they're propagandists. I no, I didn't stick around long enough for. <clears throat> there were Robert Plant was on the show, and that's another sad case. And it just it's just one sad case after another. So I can't, you know, I, I don't know. I couldn't be hypnotized, so therefore Soundgarden could not appeal to me. I can't be hypnotized, therefore. Uh, we're not passing through to the other side. I think it comes down to there are certain ones of us who just can't be hypnotized. And you, you need to be hypnotized so you see it as Disneyland and you know don't stop believing and all that mind control so that you go with it, right? And you know, you're not supposed to sit there ruining Thanksgiving dinner by mentioning certain things that are just unbelievable and intolerable and shouldn't be. And they say, I just go along and we'll all get along fine. Well, that happens until it doesn't. Now, my prediction. There will be a tremendous loss of life as a result of this. And this only, by the way. And the people who participated in this and this only. Who will exacerbate a, a great loss of life by their um, uh, free will to this um, beast. And... At that point, there will be many with second thoughts who might change their ways when they see the loss of life and not until then, folks. And that goes for you, Alex Jones listeners. Not until then. There's going to have to be a loss of life, like, I don't know, some event, a, you know, a comet, a, um, uh, you know, some kind of nuclear thing, you know, some kind of big war effort, some kind of combat something, terror, whatever, some horrible thing. And, uh, and you know, last time the Twin Towers, <clears throat> the Twin Towers weren't enough because they only repented for, they only lasted two weeks, the repentance. I was in a church situation then. They went right back to doing what exactly what, it, what, I, what I explained is the root cause of the Twin Towers. And they went right back to it. 
en masse in America. And then you have your little court jesters like Soundgarden who entertain you. Keep the, keep the Titanic sinking. Don't let them look at the water coming in. Keep the band playing. And, you know, maybe they'll put Soundgarden in the Super Bowl and they can be some uh, Bruno Mars's bitch next time. Like the Chili Peppers were. That was really sad. But they keep going. Um, and that's just the, you know, I look at that because I, I'm, you know, basically, a, you know, into verse, poetry, lyrics, vocal performance, vocalizing, speaking, communicating putting forth concepts and ideas that will help break the mind control and the malaise of the flicker rate. Attempting, though feebly I admit, to turn the tide through um, individuals realizing who they are in this whole thing and feeling good to continue and good about themselves being children of God that, you know, you were not a mistake. The world tries to tell you you're a loser and a mistake because you won't hypnotize, you won't be hypnotized, you won't be mind-controlled into their um, sewer pipe. And as a result, they want to put you out because they got control of the jobs or whatever. I wouldn't worry about that at all. Your soul is going to go on. Theirs isn't. If you're not in possession of your soul... No, I mean, <clears throat> let me put it this way. The soul goes on. The souls will go on. Okay. But the where, they, where you're going and where they're going are two different places. They, as vessels now, in human vessels, have um, egos and memories floating around in there, but their souls aren't with them in those vessels. The soul has moved somewhere else probably held in prison by the people who scalped it in exchange for the goodies of the world or whatever. It's really not just signing with Faust, you know. It's really a lot more uh, genetic than that. Scientific than that. Technological than that. So let's be very clear about all this. The only thing that you need to do on this planet, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, fellow humans is you need to remain intact however you do it and that's running the race because they're doing everything moving heaven and earth to take that which is in you and in exchange they give you a steaming pile of you know what and that's basically it but because of fear which appeals to your ego right fear changes your direction you give in, or because of greed, or a combination of fear and greed. And then you realize you got nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So you who are losers are really the winners, and you who are the winners, you're really the losers. The first shall be last, alas, Jesus said, and the last shall be first. True, true words, never spoken. Truer words were never spoken. That's exactly what has happened. And from my perspective in the spirit, and I kind of, I'm always was criticized for being too much in the spiritual realm and not practical in the, in the, in the earthly realm. And I'm, I'm like, hey, dude, I didn't miss nothing, man. <laughs> okay, I'm better off than you. My head may be in the clouds. Maybe I'm an old soul. You know, I've been there, done that so many times. I'm kind of like, on my way out of this realm, right? But doing my last bit to uh, wake my brothers and sisters up so they can um, know that they don't have to uh, join something. It's just a matter of keeping intact themselves, which by the way, I uh, give the Lord 100% credit. I, I've, I've actually tried to go to the other side, you know, and, and uh, you know, numerous ways, you know, doing whatever they tell you. Well, with me, the slavery, only it only lasts about two or three days and then I, then I bust down the stall and I just got to be free. You know, I just 
towing the line with one of these bastards is is you know who who doesn't know himself right who doesn't who has no grounding upon the earth except for the hive mind and what that and the the uh, the the faux stability that that gives him it's like i'm going to listen to this guy because well, he knows the ropes what uh and what's the goal here there's no gold watch so you know, and if, if that doesn't make any sense to you, then God bless you. Thank God that you've been preserved. That, um, as my grandfather said, people are no damn good. And that way of apprenticeship into the world system is nothing but shite. It leads to destruction. It leads to nothing. It leads to heartbreak. It leads to defeat it leads to the end of you of this and then you know and there'll be people that get so mad you know who are who are trying to stick with this mind control bible thing and they get so mad at me for saying you know for speaking you know from the heart as i do not from the head not from intellectual not from you know uh, you, you know, not if you want that, you can go to the church. They'll they'll teach you, you know, the Bible and how to think about it, and they'll they'll teach you how to think. They'll teach you what to think. They they'll control your every thought if you let them. That's what that's what churches are for to control you, and that's all they're for. There really isn't any other purpose to it. I see them on Facebook, you know, um, quoting their. You know, being, you know, I've got some that are kind of legalists and, you know, whatnot, and they go back and forth with that. And I think that's a form of, of self-comfort, you know, scripture, you know, putting lots of scriptures there because it just helps them feel like they're connected to something, you know. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know the, the answer and how, you, whatever you have to do to remain intact, then if that's it, then that's fine. I'm not going to criticize, I'm not coming against that. Um, but when you come to me and you tell me that I need to do X, Y, and Z and I'm a big disappointment because I went at it this way or that way or I'm too arrogant in what I'm saying because I'm not leaving any room for debate or whatever else you want to say, um, then I have to reject what you say because I, I know that I'm not speaking here of, you know, yes, it's all my opinion and yes, you could debate it, but I don't want to debate you. If I get a download and I don't give it out the way I get it, then... Uh, you know, you could take issue with my style, which I have no style. It's pretty gruff, I admit. Pretty, it's pretty. Um, you know, um, you know, like being on, on. It's like being in the NFL, and you know, it's fourth down. And everyone's beat up, and everyone's injured, and they're beating the crap out of each other. I don't know. I, I just give it out that way. You know, straight out. I don't know any other way to do it. I wasn't trained in the schools to be an orator. I wasn't trained to be some kind of a, a, a you, you know, some kind of a, a, a minister that gives out these. Um, beautiful sermons. I don't, it's just, it, you know, to make everybody feel good and to keep the status quo status quo. I can't do that. I can't be like a politician. I can't be like, you know, a rock star who's all too cool and, and who's going to just be up there and be all insular and, and everybody worship him for his narcissism. I can't do it. And all the other mind control tactics and neurolinguistic tactics, I can't do it. All I can do is give it to you straight out, and then and now you've got to pick the good, the the, uh, the the gems from the the crap. You know, there's there's going to be, you know, I'm uh, I'm trying to stay out of the way. Right now, today, I don't have any um, hurt. Usually, when I'm hurt, then I'm in the way. If I have a hurt, then I'm in the way. Uh, this is kind of therapeutic in the sense that I'm able to speak this after all day long taking the opposite. In other words. I go out there and take the opposite. I'm told to be mind controlled. I'm told to, you know, toe the line, do this, do that, do the other thing. You know, I'm, I'm looked down upon because I'm not helping in those things to help other people uh, to become mind control robot slaves. And so then at the end of the day, I could do this podcast and I can, I can actually say, this is what I've witnessed. This is what I'm seeing. This is what it is for me. This is what it is from uh, the spirit. This is what it is, and this is what it does. Now, my personal, I don't have any personal animus toward the, you know, the, the bands of mind control and people like that preventing all this. 
I'll speak against it because I'm trying to wake them up so they might say something relevant before they die. Wouldn't that be nice? If, if you know, at long last, at the end of the day, you did something or said something that had some relevance to something. You know, rather than keeping the thing going and promoting how great it is to be um, a soulless robot slave that just fills the box, but then you can go and, and buy these CDs. Nobody's buying CDs anymore anyway. The music business is dead. Thank God. The only way these bands can, can make a living anymore is they got to go out and, you know, play. And then, you know, they can get the mindless drones in there to, to cheer them on. But don't expect me to give it a rubber stamp or to, to look at it, you know, unless it's conscious. And if it's not, if it's, I, I've, look, I, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at the charts on Reverb Nation. And so I'm looking at some of the people on the charts and, and don't thank you. We're, we're, I don't know why we're number one, but we were number one in, in Electronica and I don't even do Electronica. So it's kind of a weird chart. I, you know, but, but anyway, there's other people there and I listen to their music and there's, there's one, I know there's one band that, you know, Music Without Borders was their, uh, was their, um, you know, I, I don't even, you know, there are all these bands in Santa Fe and I hear them on Reverb Nation. I'm like, you know, and I've, I've reached out to a couple of them to become friends and they didn't want anything to do with me, you know? So, uh, so speaking truth in Santa Fe makes you a pariah. I guess that's what it is. So speaking truth makes you a pariah. So singing about truth lyrically or poetically makes you a pariah. So sing about that, which makes people um, successful in the world shit stem. And that will make you successful to the extent that you mind control more people. Oh, well, that's really something to be proud of at the end of your lives. And the reason I'm speaking this way is because this, the, the thing that has to happen isn't, you know, the Patriot movement picking up guns against the BLM. It's going to be people breaking free from this mind control slavery and soullessness in exchange for security in the world system and re being redeemed and restored back to being intact with a soul. That was what it's going to take to um, save the world situation. I understand the Lord talks about apocalypse and, you know, the fall of Babylon and all those things. It's all negative and it's all going to fall. It's all going to collapse. I'm not surprised that man goes all the way to total collapse and then some wake up and, and the rest are, are um, you know, just punished for their stupidity, really. And the Lord should punish you for stupidity because, I mean, if, if, if you get, have an IQ of 130, let's say, and you dumb yourself down to 70, which is basically what you see on television, um, what, what, you know, at that point, at that point, I mean, whose fault is that? Don't say fluoride in the water. Whose fault is it? Right, it's a free will choice. I'm going to be stupid, like Jackson Brown said in his song. I'm going to be a happy idiot working for the legal tender. In other words, I'm going to dumb myself down, says Jackson Brown, and, and go for the money. All right? So if everybody does that, this is what you get. We're on the, we, we have the specter of World War III, nuclear World War III, the end of civil, you know, a, a great deal of suffering upon the earth because of that attitude right there. And um, so let's see where that goes, old Jackson baby. Let's see where that all goes. Interestingly enough, Jackson Brown came out of uh, L.A. kind of semi-society, actually. Um, and a, a lot of these people in Laurel Canyon, you know, the whole Laurel Canyon music movement and, and the Sunset Strip, you have, you have to speak of both of them together. All that that came out of L.A. from the uh, early 70s on. Um, I was really born in uh, out of sort of elite military industrial complex, um, mind control, LSD oriented CIA backdrop, and the hippie movement included. And that's where Jackson Brown came from. But then in 1974 or three or whenever it was, when he did his song, The Pretender, which I thought was a great song because at least the guy's being honest, right? He says, 
he's going to be a happy idiot and work for the legal tender. Well, then if you're going to be a happy idiot going for the money, why should someone like me ever listen to you or your lyrics ever again after, after your confession? You know, you haven't met my redneck friend. I'm the redneck. And this is, uh, you know, your wake up call. Now, I'm not talking about the rednecks who are there as uh, dunces of the world system. I'm talking about rednecks who are going to stand with the Lord and um, go with truth and eschew or remain separate from the world system because that is the way of God, of spirit, of emancipation of the soul, which leads to peace, which le leads to success. That's why it's, we're, why do you think we would, do you think there's a price to pay? for speaking frankly on this t subject. I am outraged that there would be any price to pay. Any. It's a travesty. There should be rewards. There should be honor. There should be reverence. You know, not, not, not narcissistic reverence, but reverence for something true, something real. But instead... How dare you rob me of my Disneyland experience? I got Soundgarden over here with Mickey Mouse and everything's fine. I'm really picking on them today. Well, what a disappointment they've, they, they've been, you know. I thought they would... Uh, I hate to say this word evolve, but I thought, you know. Uh, what I like is people that kind of evolve with what's happening, you know. And, and the music has changed and they change with it, you know. They, that's what I like to do. I, well, no, I've, I'm, I'm, I have no goal in Babylon. I don't care if people like me or not. I'm not looking for an audience. I'm not looking for um, success. I'm not looking for uh, um, David Geffen to like me. Um, I, I'm not looking for um, them to. I, I'm not looking for anything. This is this is this is the poetry that has to be. It's got to be anarchistic in the sense that it cannot be uh, for them to like me I have to go with the mind control for them to like me I have to uh, become a slave for them to like me I have to lose my soul and you know it's not easy to get those back by the way folks uh, then I would be like them and why should I listen to them if they've got nothing to say and they don't listen I've heard them all my life I've heard them in school. When I was in college, they were just hammering and hammering away at all these young minds, trying to make them stupid. And the whole point of college was to make people dumb and socialize them to be able to get along, to go along and whatnot. And they're all listening to Soundgarden <laughs> back then. <laughs> so maybe that was used as kind of like a mind control music to help conform them to the uh, world um, beautiful uh, uh, system. Isn't it grand, ladies and gentlemen, that at long last, all of our institutions, all of our education, all of Western civilization, I know Michael Savage goes on with, with the, 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 you know, waxing nostalgic for the, uh, for the Renaissance. I'm like, there was no there there either but he's just looking at the quality of the art, which I would agree with him, and that was the highest thing could produce. But I think the quality of the art now is like synthesis. You know, the synthesizer would be higher than the Sistine Chapel, in my humble opinion. And more people have access to it. Yeah, there's a, there's a positive side. There's a great side to looking at this. And it's like, you know, I like being on the cutting edge of music and what's happening with um, sound because it's, the advances are just unbelievable every day. But I, you know, this idea of sticking with the whole, um, I'm gonna stick with my guitar, bass, and drums because that's what I had in it. You know, I'm a traditionalist and all this and I'm not gonna look at a synth. I'm not gonna look at the, the, the modern sounds. I'm not gonna look at the different way of doing drums. I'm not gonna look at any of that. Uh, then, then you become a curio item in a, in a forgotten museum outside Barstow, California. That's where you wind up. I like going with the flow, you know, and, and there's some people doing some great things with technology. There's some great things happening, but we need this kind of, 
We need people to start writing about relevant things to help wake people up, and then we can even go faster toward technology could work for us in that, in that sense. There could be advancement. I mean, not this MERS thing, not, you know, um, the Al-Qaeda thing, not the, um, you know, blowing our own stuff up to, so the totalitarian government can take over more uh, property and rights and, and uh, destroy the economy and get more power. You know, destroy people's health so they can come in as angels of light and take care of their health care. I mean, come on. Aren't we sick of this? And I'm doing a shorthand thing here because I'm assuming you understand, you know, the paragraphs and paragraphs that could go inherently within that whole, all these little tiny, you know, these, these things we're doing to ourselves. And we could really move on if we didn't have this thing holding us down, man, uh, which Soundgarden is aiding and abetting along with all the other um, Babylon acts. I know. Doesn't man have a right to make a living doing something? And, and no, they're very talented. They, they're, they'd be great in Vegas. Uh, that'd be a good place for them. They ought to get little suits, you know, and little bow ties, and that would really be cool. And they could be underneath Bruno Mars, and they could be jamming at the Super Bowl, and life's a bowl of cherries, right? No, no, I sense the um, the Seattle vibe is, you got to realize Seattle's a big heartbreak because, I mean, I, I was, you know, the biggest fan of Jimi Hendrix and especially Mitch Mitchell, the drummer. He's a guy who really never got enough credit for his drumming, you know. What a tremendous drummer he was. What a great band that was. And I, I liked, I used to collect all the bootleg albums. I used to have stuff where Hendrix would just go on for like, I used to have tapes, reel-to-reel -reel tapes, of uh, bootleg sessions where he'd go on and on playing Wild Thing for like two hours. I wish I had those tapes today. I don't have them. They would be priceless. Can you imagine uh, what I get at Sotheby's for those if they were still good? Unbelievable. You know, I mean, you know, people taking their tape recorders to concerts and stuff. And that's the stuff I like. See, that's what they tried to break him of. They wanted to break him of that habit of just kind of winging it and going into a song and, and getting into a jam and going for like an hour. And then, you know, there might be like 15 minutes of that. That's sheer genius. It was worth the wait. And I liked it when he would just sort of bitch slap the audience and do what he wanted to do and to hell with anybody else. And there was a semblance of freedom there. I understand he, he you know, he admitted at one time he may have a demon and all that. I, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to, I'm just going with what I saw. And then you go to Seattle, you know, where there's the Jimi Hendrix Museum. It started out being a tribute to Jimi Hendrix. It's called the uh, Empower Music Project or the something, mu Enjoy Music Project or the Experience Music Project, EMP, Experience Music Project. A huge building, a beautiful building, awesome, awesome museum that began as the Jimi Hendrix Museum, I believe. Uh, and whether it was Wozniak or somebody or a group of people that were in computers that put it together, I'm not sure exactly how it got together but um, you know now when you go in there there's a huge like a room that's just a big giant screen the biggest screen you've ever seen and it's got you know people playing you know on stage and, and they were doing a women and, and a, a women rocker segment that was pretty cool you go into another area there and there's the uh, uh, Kurt Cobain um, Nirvana exhibit but the main one that I like to see is the Jimi Hendrix one where they had like you know the drum set Mitch Mitchell played, you know, the outfit, the, God, they had some outlandish outfits back then. The thing about Tease Terror, some, some documentaries. It's, it's admittedly going to be smaller exhibit. And then on the third floor, Native Instruments, um, a great electronic music company and that builds instruments, um, Native meaning computer, uh, built this whole you know, there's a whole studio up there that people can go and cut vocals in a real studio situation. You can go in with four guys of a band and you've got your tune, guitar, bass, drums, everything, and do like a 15-minute session where you record that to a CD, like you play one of your songs or whatever. Uh, you've got uh, other areas where you can, like a kiosk where you can pick up a bass guitar, the other guy's got a drum, the other guy's got a, a regular guitar, and you can actually jam with strangers that you don't know. They've got another collective drum thing that you play at, and each each person can sit around a circle and playing a different drum. 
And it's all just about music education, getting kids involved in music, which I'm a, I'm a big proponent for. And, um, you know, because music can be so powerful in delivering a message, especially of, of reality, which would be interesting for a change. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I look at the whole, look, for me, the, all the music and everything is, and even now, this is, for me, acapella, this is music. The podcast is music because we're riffing in the spirit. You know, we're jamming here. You're as much a part of it as I am. I'm feeling your vibe and you're feeling, you no know, outside of time. My spirit exists outside space time. How about yours? Okay, so there we're collaborating. And then through the spirit, which you and I are both connected, we're putting forth this word. And it, it is pretty um, amazing, uh, the, uh, the, the, the surety of it and the, 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 the solidity of it and the truth of it. And, and now there is a, you know, a bit of uh, kind of a little almost a, um, I can see how people would think that I kind of come off as a little bit arrogant um, because it, when it starts riffing like that, I take authority over it, you know, and it's, I'm not going to let anyone else um, in. So that's what you're picking up on, but that's what I have to do. And if the word isn't right, if there's some falsehood, then it's not ever going to go up there. But this idea of being relevant, of saying things that are relevant, of, of printing things that are relevant, of writing lyrics that are relevant, of having bands that are relevant, uh, music is so powerful. And yet it's now threatened. You know where music's going to wind up because of the abrogation of truth that's gone on in American music? You know where it's going to wind up? It's going to wind up being Muzak in elevators, and that's going to be the end of it. And that's the punishment for having, um, you know, let down. Yeah, that's right. If you go for the truth, though, you may not work. Well, so what? So what? At least you did something. At least you can die in peace knowing that you did something that, and, it, and, it, and it didn't come back void. It didn't come back in vain. Every effort done in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, effort of truth. Look, true lyrics are cool. There's a lot that could be, like political corruption. If you wrote about political corruption, you know, it's cool, but not from a left or right wing perspective, from a deeper uh, lizardine uh, angle where you can see the, you can see what actually pulls their chain. And then writing about that would be really super cool. You know, good versus evil. That's why I watched the, we watched the first uh, episode of uh, Spider-Man, you know, how would Spider-Man kind of became Spider-Man. And it was all over the top, you know, but I like, you know, I, I love all that. I know I never saw the original Spider-Man. It was like, wow, why didn't I see that? I just loved every minute of it because it was just so good versus evil. And it was just, it was just all, all it was, it would, it gave me, now that I could give praise for. That was fantastic. You know, <laughs> wonderful. And then I tuned into a little bit of Judge Dredd, all the comic books. And that was great. And the music in that was phenomenal. And that's what I mean by cutting edge. That they, uh, uh, this is Paul something Morgan. I don't know. Something Paul Morgan, whatever. The, uh, the composer for Dread. I have one of his, uh, of his CD. Not his CD, but I've, I've got one of his. Uh, I've got one of the Dreads on. Um, he's the composer. Paul Morgan something. Paul Craig Morgan. something. Oh, Craig Paul. Uh, no, I. Look. Anyway, those are the names involved in the composer. I should know the composer better than that because I really play his tracks a lot. On that, I mean, that's totally on my iPod. And I just really dig his... He's just a great composer. Great, he's a great example of what new modern music is really all about. And uh, he, he's one of the composers for film. A lot of the film composers are really on the cutting edge of instrumental music and what's going on and the blend between like classical instruments and electronic and it's and it's marvel what they're doing is some really amazing work uh, some of these rock bands would well take heed of that i know i know there's all this pressure to stay with your guitar bass and drums and i like guitar bass and drums too if i were doing drums in a guitar bass and drum band i would just i would go all i would want to do blues you know a little blues rock maybe but I mean, that's really the root of it, isn't it? I would go back to the root. If you want to do the roots, let's go all the way to the roots. Those are the roots. Um, psychedelic rock is dead, but psy psychedelic um, electronic is not. It's, it's, it's what's going on right now.
anyway, the Judge Dredd soundtrack is phenomenal, and and it's I've I've you know I've been a big fan of electronic music and experimental music, and especially ambient and electronica and trance and all this stuff from way way back when it began. I knew it was going to be the future of music. I knew that it was going to be the one thing that people could see in, in dub. I came up through dubbing. You know, even my studio here. I've got a big, expensive studio, and and basically, um, I'm a dub guy. I'm using I'm using all that to 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 make what my dubs sound better. Meaning, putting in like you know bits and pieces of dialogue and having like tableau, having little journeys that you go on. I really enjoy that, and and I you know it gives meaning to me. That's the stuff I used to like to listen to. I know that some people have taken um, issue with me having a studio and, and they're not happy about that. Well, you're not supposed to be jealous of other people. You know, I, I had it and um, it's, you know, it'll outlive me probably, the, the hardware. But I, I like hardware because it gives me an analog, you know, a warm, rich tone and feeling. So I have to have this. You know what's expensive is this this these racks of of hardware, but they give the flavors to the. I like to just use that pretty much and less computer stuff because then it's it's just more real. And um, you know I uh, I is it necessary? No, of course it's not necessary. You can do whatever you want. But I see how some people are. You know, they get, they perceive you as having, you know, like you're somewhere if you have that. And it's like, no, I'm not anywhere. I've got actually two studios, two um, analog studios, um, one that's semi-mobile that, you know, that, that you'd have to ship ahead of you if you're going to live somewhere for a few months or go somewhere. But I also like to wander the earth, you know, and I like to make music while doing it. And, and I like to... Uh, communicate with you while doing it. I'm trying, I'm trying like today, for example, to really understand this soul scalping nature and the journey of the soul. And I wanted to ponder that idea that the soul evolves. Well, I don't think that's wrong. It's because the soul starts kind of like, you know, of what the soul already knew it forgets. And then it comes into this real world and then it remembers slowly. And that, that's called that for one writer that's called evolving, but it's not really evolving since nothing evolves. And see what I mean? So I'm trying to explain it in a, in a real time way, but there is no such thing as real time in real reality. Now, those are the kinds of topics I would like to delve into. You know, now that we understand what this is all about, now that we understand how, you know, it's not just a takeover of the United States or this country or that country, it's a takeover of humanity. And all you got to do is remain intact to win. And they'll try to give you trinkets if you sell out to them. And what, what do you sell out? You sell out your soul, which you can't really sell out, by the way. But they can take it out of your body and put in, insert, you know, themselves into you. And you'll still think you're you in your body, but you'll be missing something. The real you, which will be kind of in a, you know, not there anymore. And that, that's why they call it death. Because when the soul is gone from the body, the body is dead. Amen? What remains there is little ghosts, you know, and multiple personalities that keep going and making you think you're really you when you know you're not really you anymore. You're missing something. Does that sum it up for you? I know. People have asked me, they've told me, why not just give it a rest and stop thinking about all this stuff and stop talking about all this stuff and just give it a rest. Don't you ever have fun? Don't you? And I'm, I'm like, this is my fun. What are you talking about? I'm having a tremendous fun. It's fun for me to talk about these issues. It's fun for me to talk about philosophy and reality. It's fun to talk. It's not even philosophy. It's just reality. It's fun to talk about what the whole purpose of life is. It's fun to talk about what the, uh, what the end game is. It's fun to talk about what the entire riddle of this existence is and then solve it every single time, every single time, every single time without fail. And then watch the reaction out there and predict what the reaction will be and then have it be exactly what I predicted. Love it. Are you kidding? That's pure mana. Right. My prediction is um, uh, 
you know, the bulk majority are going to remain mind control slave robot idiots. And they're going to continue um, singing the praises of Spoon Man and they're wondering whether they'll get off or not. And that's all they're going to think about. Yeah. While all this is happening, while the suffering is incalculable, that's what we have to deal with. That's the assault. No, it's, it's only well, to whom much is given, much is expected, you know, so... You know, that was a band that was ex expected. I mean, I'm, I'm picking on them. I'm sorry. There's a million other people I could pick on. Um, but, I mean, they were given many talents and pff, throw them out the window. What are you going to do? You, you know, what are you going to do? People are ensconced in left-wing politics. They think the whole solution is get rid of the right wing. So there they are. Or right-wing politics, get rid of the left. And they, they miss the forest for the trees. And that's, they, they live there. While not talking about the elephant in the room, i.e., where, dude, where's my soul? Right. If you had soul, then there'd be something on the stage to watch. But instead, it's propaganda. Oh, you know, clever, clever kind of lyrical propaganda. You know, I guess in the past they had hits like Black Hole Sun, which I guess is talking about someone that uh, is not going to go with the world system, so he's a black hole or whatever. You know what I mean? So he's of no uh, import whatsoever. So he's of no effect. So he's not even real. So you have to become unreal to become real. And the people that are still real are now unreal. To me, the black hole is what I saw last night. Okay? If you wanted me to get in your face. Uh, what I saw last night was a black hole on a stage. Absolutely no light whatsoever. And uh, so another disappointment. I won't be tuning in again. That, that I've had enough, you know, shh, next please. Yeah, just because people have talent, you know, and they can sing, I used to, you know, cut them slack as, wow, what a great singer, you know. What a great guitar player. What a great, you know, talent this is or that is. Now if the vibe is rough, the spirit's not there, I'm just like gone. And I keep looking like now on Reverb Nation and for, you know, people I can download, you know, that I'll look anywhere, you know, SoundCloud, for anything kind of real, for, for you know, and we got to make this more, yeah, this is like a, a poem. Ulysses, the weakness of men. Come on, Z, what about compassion for the weakness of men? Okay, we're all weak. I guess I'm here to lord it over you in one way or another, you know, to say that, you know, because I can't be hypnotized, I'm really ahead of you. <laughs> Not to lord it over you, because there's only one lord, not me. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a mess. If you see me and, and get to know, so many people have gotten to know me personally, and then they just walk away like they had some image of me, you know, and I, so I try to uh, deconstruct myself as any sort of leader because they have an image of me from being online and, you know, they build it up and then they see me. And it's nothing but a big disappointment. But it's a disappointment because I should look the part. I should act the part. And I'm just a mess like you are, you know? So it's like, and I realize that. But when something comes through this mess, you know, out of a, the muck grows the most beautiful lotus flower. But it needs mud and dirt and slime to grow. And then on top of one of these murky ponds, you know, uh, is this beautiful lotus just sitting there, you know, grown up from the muck beneath and then shining for all the world to see. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, then what comes to mind was like, um, you know, there's poets who in their drunkenness are writing verse that becomes, you know, the, the, the standard of truth for the ages. Um, out of the muck can come that truth. But unfortunately in our pop culture and what passes as... Um, you know, the entertainment business. It's, it seems to be all about the entertainers and not, not about the audience because the audience is too stupid to realize they're being fed garbage. So they just applaud it because they're programmed to do that. So what really happened there? The band is programmed to play. The audience is programmed to applaud. Did anything really happen there? And the answer is, of course not. Nothing happened there. They might as, the, all you saw was uh, basically a, a, a plastic... Um, uh, you know, a wind-up toy. You know, the audience was a wind-up toy and so was the, 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 the singer, the band, the whatever. 
when I went to Nashville, when we went to Nashville, I felt the same thing. It was just like one wind up toy after another. You know, everybody living in some alternate reality, trying to be somebody they're not. I'm talking about entertainers now, people that were, there was a different band in every bar and there were people playing on the street and, you know, it's Music City. They're playing everywhere. But they, but was anyone saying anything? I heard not one thing up and down the boulevard, up and down the boulevard, peeking in and out of the, you know, bars, some country twanging stuff going on there where people are trying to say something. And they were just really trying to imitate heroes of the past. You know, so I guess there was a could, you know, and then there was a band over at the hockey stadium, big time hockey stadium there, huge. And it was right across from the hotel. We were in the Hilton there. And there was a band, you know, so it was a big deal. So they were all playing. They had the band outside set up and all. And they were just doing covers of like Led Zeppelin. And, you know, way back then, I'm like, hasn't that been forgotten yet? I mean, aren't we be, isn't there like, couldn't you do a cover from like the 90s? Apparently not. And I was reminded of all the um, philosophical angst I had in being in a band before. In that situation of having to do those kinds of covers. And I just can't even imagine that, you know, the same playlist that we had back in the day, they had. And it, was there anything beyond Led Zeppelin? What, what happened? What about the two early 2000s? It, it's like there was this classic rock period and it never went away and everyone has to cover that still and that was one of the reasons I left because that was like the only job and I was like well that's not going to work for me anyway it's brutal and nasty and I suppose you know um, the liberating thing for me is like I I have a um, studio to produce whatever and uh, and now we've got Rich, you know, DCP, Death Camp Parade. We have a new tune out that uh, that I think is pretty cool called Infiltrator. It's about um, people infiltrating your chat rooms, infiltrating your, you know, psyops who are spies for the government, infiltrating your um, churches, infiltrating your, uh, um, you know, spies, infiltrating your um, group your Bible study group at home, infiltrating your conspiracy theory blog, infiltrating, infiltrating, infiltrating. And they appear just like you. And then, you know, some of these appear to be leaders, like cult leaders. And they reel you in and they'll be your mom, mother, your father, your whatever you need, they'll be. You know, it's almost on a supernatural level. They will reflect back to you whatever you need reflected so that you will have confidence in them. Some are not even human. Not even human. Clones, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's even on, it's, it's that bizarre. They show up out of nowhere. There's no past. They, there's no history. You look them up. There's nothing. Like they came out of a laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and then there's a weird side beyond that. Um, so, we, we, so we just wanted to do a, a song about these infiltrators and uh, psyops. And so there's a lot of cool lyrics that came to me. I mean, I had so much material that it couldn't fit into, you know, three minutes. We had to extend it to five minutes. And still I, I had like, you know, another two pages of material that I didn't, that I couldn't sing because, you know, it was, uh, and I actually do sing in a tenor voice. And you've got to tune into that because, you know, I have a pretty high range uh, these days. And that's, this is the first time where my tenor really came into its own. You know, where it really was clear and sharp, and I just seemed to know where to go with the, with the, the music. And the music was really good by Rich uh, Keltner of uh, Headless Frog Watchman Radio. Rich, you know him, and he had a, a track, and you know he asked me if I could do something with, uh, you know, about psyops and infiltrators. I heard the track, I loved the track, so I was like, so I put it up, and um, you know, I didn't even have my studio because it's being in for repair. So all I have is a. Uh, I had the mic, and I had the preamp, and I had a copy of Reason I could record onto. I didn't have anything else because all my other stuff, Pro Tools, all that's gone uh, while they're repairing uh, a, one of my computers. So that's all I had, but that's all I needed, right? And um, it just flowed. I don't even know where it came from. I mean, I, 
there was not really any work involved. It was just like it was it was like I'd rehearsed it a hundred times already. You know, it was just like and I'm like, wow, I want to step into that more. That was just it was just there. And um and in fact, unlike um most other people, these lyrics are actually about something important. Uh, about something, but it was cool at the same time, you know. It wasn't just saying, watch out, watch out for these guys. I took on the persona of I am the infiltrator. Infiltrator. We played on that word. Infiltrator. Like a traitor. An infiltrator. And uh, so I took on the point of view that I am that guy. I am the psyop. I'm the infiltrator. You know, and, and again, what are these infiltrators doing? Some of them are shape-shifting aliens, okay? I'll just be honest with you. Some aren't even human, okay? And they're there to get your, that's right, to hypnotize you into bowing down so that they can take something from you and then give you something in return that then is um, basically you're like a cow now in someone's ranch on your way to slaughter. No, you're not a milk cow. <laughs> See, there's a big misnomer about that. No, you're a meat cow. Yeah, you know, you're there for meat. Yeah, they literally want to dine on you. Um, as far as being useful as a milk cow, well, I suppose in the beginning they could, they could use you as that, but but eventually they want to process you. <laughs> to to mix metaphors beautifully. No, I mean, if I, yeah, hey, if I wanted to play the game and I wanted to do all those kind of lyrics about all that kind of stuff and, and you know, you know, twist it up, a double entendre and, and move it around, but always hiding the Satan, you know, the Satan game, the Satan game, the Satan game, I could do it all day long because I know the, I know exactly what uh, they've all done. So I could do the same, I could even do it way, way more clever than them, than what I've, rather than what I've heard so far. You know, to where I'll be singing about like, you know, some inane thing, but it'll all be about something else. I mean, I could make it so clever that you would never know that I was programming you with the words. In other words, I mean something else, that something else goes into your subconscious and programs you. While you think I'm saying about Mary, Mary, quite contrary, it's really just, it's really making you into a slave. I could do it, folks. They would pay me millions and millions and billions to do that. If it would work every time, like you hear it once and that's it, you're a slave. But I won't. Oh, yes. There's something about intention behind the lyrics where it doesn't even matter what the metaphor is. What matters is the intention. And the intention is what speaks to the subconscious and that's what programs it. Absolutely. I could help destroy my brothers and sisters, all of them in the name of personal aggrandizement, in the name of personal narcissism, in the name of personal gain, in the name of being a big time rock star. I could do it. I could funnel those lyrics actually to these rock stars now. Like I could give them to Soundgarden and they could, they could, you know, they could really understand that there's something in these lyrics and they could sing them and they would be propelled to they could do a White House concert then and they could really enjoy themselves. Just like Roger Daltrey saying, singing in the White House, we won't get fooled again. <laughs> you don't see the... <laughs> you <don't, laughs> No, you'd have to be somewhere else. You'd have to be like on the moon and, you know, away for a long time. And then you'd, you'd see something like that and you'd just die laughing. But maybe it's just my own weird sixth sense of humor that Roger Daltrey singing won't get fooled again in the White House is something. It's a guffaw laughter. I'm rolling on the floor laughing with that one. That is, that is beyond the beyond of all ironies and, and all humor. That is something I will laugh about for the rest of my life. What a buffoon Daltrey turned into. Unbelievable. That he would, you know, well, the man has no integrity, obviously. <laughs> and he obviously, the song is meaningless and it's BS at best. And uh, so he sang it at the White House, where it's really where it Next, it, maybe, maybe it should be with Mickey Mouse and Disneyland, where they all wind up. Um, 
rather than being free. Remember, I saw Joe Cocker in a restaurant, in my, my ex-brother-in-law's restaurant. And he's a businessman, a successful businessman, wearing a kind of a business suit, doing his uh, business. And I'd, it's taken me all this time to, you know, and I, I said hello and, you know, met him because I was part of the family then. And um, I just found how, how I remember him when he was like mock playing guitar on the stage and doing his best Ray Charles imitation and, and you know, with a little help from my friends and all that. Um, and um, now that he, if you saw what I saw that he was a you know a typical businessman you might have been shocked and you know he had a little help from his friends I mean you know that song's not exactly about um you know, I mean, it's it's a, it's it's about your it's about selfishness, I guess. It's about self-aggrandizement. It's about um, it's about um, come on, will I get off? It's about uh, whatever you your friends will help you to um, whatever they'll help you orgyize yourself. Wouldn't it be great if some a song like that was just about what it was? trying to be like you know a little help from friends to do something meaningful you know but I, I know I know I know I was just thinking about what would happen if there was no genitals if there was no penises and no vaginas what would they sing about then I guess they'd run out of material like there's nothing else Oh, no, food and money. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. Oh, don't, don't forget having how many slaves you got underneath you. Oh, yeah, that's really important. Yeah. That's what makes my life go round. So enjoy my disgust, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am so thoroughly disgusted with this country and all countries, but I mean, in particular, with um, as all my icons fall and crash to the ground, as all my past things I looked up to are now disrespected as basically everything has been seen through and uh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. As it's all been sort of summed up and, uh, you know, dispensed with. As I stand at the end of history and beyond this world. As I stand in the, in the center of real reality, which is timelessness. As I sit here for a moment looking back in my experience through humanity. And all I can think of is Roger Daltrey singing Won't Get Fooled Again to Barack Obama and the White House. At that point, ladies and gentlemen, laughter is the only salvation because anything else would be either crying forever or suicide because that's just how sad it is. Uh... Why? Because it never had to be that way. Because with just a semi-intelligence, one would have figured out which way to go. Which it's about the, you know, the continue, and it could have been a beautiful world where people treated each other really nice and with respect. There wasn't that pecking order in Hollywood or the whole rock star narcissism and all that, you know, actor narcissism and entertainment and, and sports entertainment and all these people with all this, all these goals that mean nothing and there could have been some kind of mass awakening of consciousness and love which is what really it's all about and there could have you know but no 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 everyone's when they say love it's conditional so long as you join my left-wing love party then 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 you're okay otherwise I hate you that's the love you have today and so with that I bid you shalom, oh, or right wing, you know, neocon, you're either a neocon or I hate you, you know, but be one of us and we love, love, love you, you know, be a slave and we love, love, love you, um, you know, 
uh, just give in and we love, love, love you. Uh, put your shoulder to the wheel of this world and we are really moving somewhere. Where is it we're going, Mr. Wizard? Where is it that we are going? Where are we headed putting our shoulder to the wheel and helping out so much? Where is it that we're all going? And no one of these slaves on stage can answer? Well then, you, sir, have lost my audience. Until next time, I bid you adieu. Go with God. <laughs>